Hi guys, it's Ariana. Welcome back to my channel. So for tonight's video, we are going to be reading some more scary stories. I do want to thank everybody for your patience in the last couple of weeks. I have been missing from YouTube. I went through a move and I recently moved. So this is a different studio setup. So if the sound quality sounds different, it's because I'm in a new location. So <laughs> hopefully the cars won't bother me here, but I have been going through some personal things that I'm not really going to touch base on on the internet, but just in my own personal life, I have been going through it. So that's why I've been missing from YouTube for the last two weeks or so. I didn't want to take time off from filming because it was October and I was really trying to post every single day in October, but it just wasn't possible. So I do want to apologize and thank you so much for being so patient, but I will hopefully be back and <laughs> I am really excited to read some more scary stories. So before I jump into the scary stories, I do want to give a really big thanks to the sponsor of today's video. So the Udi reached out to me and they asked me if I wanted to work with them. They sent me this adorable Reptar Udi. So it is absolutely massive. It is huge. I love it. It is so cozy. It is so warm. It's actually very breathable for the fact that it's a, literally a blanket sweater. And I actually have an Udi already. I had a unicorn one from years ago and I literally wear it all the time. I wear it camping. I wear it sitting around a fire. I just like wear it around the house. It is literally my most cozy thing possible. I was so excited when they reached out and wanted to send me one. Also the fact that you guys have seen in my past videos, I wear a Reptar like long sleeve shirt all the time and I could not believe that they sent me a Reptar one because I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It is so freaking warm, it's so soft, it's so cozy and it is probably the most comfortable thing I've ever put on and it's so fucking cute. So they are kind enough to also offer a discount code to you guys. So if you guys want to pick up an Oda yourself because Christmas is coming up, my discount code is twistedglam35. I'll post it on the screen here and in my description box down below so you guys can save some money. I don't get a kickback or anything for the discount code. It's just so that you guys can save money. And then I'm pretty sure if you guys click the link, they're notified that you guys used my link. So if you guys are interested in saving some money and you want to get an Udi, definitely pick one up and save some money because why not? As per usual, I have my wicked candle here making my whole studio smell like caramel apple and it smells so good. I wish you guys had smell-o-vision because it really does smell amazing and I'm so excited. So let's just jump on into it. So the first one is from the True Scary Story section and it's from the Reddit author Switz Cheese. This one's titled Little Experiences Throughout My Childhood. First time here, so I hope you are all fascinated by this. Long intro short. My mom worked for a construction company that built our house. She helped design it. We are the first family there, second in the neighborhood. I live in my own place with my dad. She lives there with my sister now. Every so often, when I was six or so, we would come home to the screen being off the window. We assumed my dad broke it again. Being divorced meant he wasn't around much. We didn't care at first, but we'd come home to the TV left on, to a weird channel, and another time when the light switch, dual sliding for a fan and light, were completely broken. We started locking the windows after that. Things settled down for a little while, but one day we came home to the grandfather clock, roughly 200 pounds, which sits at an angle, completely pushed back flush in the corner. A couple days later, we came home to find window marker all over my sister's mirror. At this point, we assumed that the place was haunted. Fast forward a couple years. All three of us are in the living room watching TV and I was playing Pokemon. That's when I hear a cough, a deep male cough. We all looked at each other, my mom silently grabbing my metal baseball bat and walked into the laundry room. It was empty. The garage door was shut and the door leading out of it, which has been broken and lodged for years. It's been about 25 years since that house was built with no explanation to any of these things. We found out recently when we assumed my dad would break in that he was in Northern Michigan for his own construction job during the time. It's not super scary, but it's definitely odd. So that was the whole story. So it's just like little weird occurrences that keep happening in their house. That's super strange. No thanks. Thank you so much for allowing me to read your story and let's jump into the next one. So this is from the no sleep section and it's titled The House on the Corner. This house on the corner, as far as anybody knew, was never inhabited. As far back as Esme could remember, this house gave everyone she knew the most eerie and unpleasant feeling that something was inside waiting in the depths for its prey. There was a rumor and legend about the house and its previous owners but even Esme's grandparents could never recall anyone living there. There was a different contradicting accounts of the house, from criminals to witches to cults and escaped mental patients, all insane dramatic tales of murder, evil, terror, and mystery. The house itself was extremely dilapidated, with peeling paint, ivy growing wild all over, smashed top story windows, and boarded up doors. 
It had a dark and gloomy air that made people shudder involuntarily when they walked past. Even the mention of the house on the corner made people uncomfortable and changed the subject as quick as they could. Esme was fascinated by the house. She tried to research its history and ask locals different questions, but didn't find any satisfactory answer to explain why it stood empty for years. Why wasn't it sold? Or demolished. The council didn't even want to discuss this house and dismissed Esme outright from making any inquiries on its origins and why it was taking up a decent sized section of a prime piece of land. Esme knew on Halloween night she was going to explore this house. It didn't protrude her the same way that it had everyone else. It was just an abandoned house with an unknown history and that was all. She asked her reluctant friend to come with her so at least she wasn't completely alone. Only one of them agreed. Esme used a trick or treating as an excuse to go out after dark. Her mother's usual refrain was, don't go near that damned house, Esme. But Esme had already packed a torch and crowbar in her lolly bag. Esme was dressed as a basic vampire tonight to match with Rene, who was coming with her to the house. She assured her parents she was most certainly not going anywhere near the house, especially on Halloween. Rene was going to videotape the whole thing for Esme and put it on their blog. None of these kids believed that they were going into the house so this was the proof that they needed. Their street was full of trick-or-treaters, so different witches, werewolves, Frankenstein, Draculas, and skeletons were crossing the street and knocking on different doors, all shrieking and laughing. Esme and Renee were standing in the gloom at the rear end of the house, prying off an old slat of wood at the back window. The nails were old and rusty, so they came off easily. So Esme and Renee didn't really need to use much force with the crowbar. Esme heaved herself through the window shining the torch into the interior of what looked like a bedroom. There was an old bed collapsed in the corner. The bed was black with mold and an old rotting chest of drawers in the other corner. The smell was overwhelming with mildew and mustiness. Esme gagged in disgust, leading the way into the hallway with an old rotting staircase leading to the level above. She crossed the room to the right and came across to the lounge room with a sorted of old dusty furniture and a disguised piano with broken keys. Renee went to explore the kitchen beyond yelling out a horrified scream of rats came running back out to Esme. We have enough footage now, E. We should go. This place is making me feel gross. Esme rolled her eyes in exasperation. What about the rest of the house? Esme dragged Renee to the foot of the stairs and both tentatively climbed each step, hoping it would hold their weight. When in doubt, keep filming. Esme whispered to Renee as they made it to the second floor. The temperature felt like it had dropped several degrees up there. Esme shivered and pulled her jersey tighter around her. We will just get a few videos and then be done, Esme decided, turning the corner with Renee. Only she wasn't there. Renee? Esme called out, peering into the rooms. The first two were completely empty. The third was a bathroom with a broken toilet, a bath, its curtain black with grime, and a shattered sink with a smashed mirror. Esme shouted into the gloom, very funny. She stepped into the last room, which was another bedroom. It looked to be a child's room, judging by the old dollhouse and a collection of old and decaying teddies on the bed. Esme shone her torch into every crook of the room and stopped as she got to the last corner by the window. Crouched low, with her back to her, was Renee. Renee, Esme called out with a relief. What are you doing? Renee slowly turned, and Esme came to a sudden horrified realization that it wasn't Renee. The creature's face was completely decomposed with eyes as black as pits, its mouth hanging limp and open. Its teeth were like jagged fangs, its rancid breath permeating the room. She was skeletal and hunched in a stature just staring at Esme with a hungry curiosity. Esme was paralyzed with terror and can barely breathe. Her heart was pounding painfully in her ears. She felt the blood coursing through her veins and the feeling of utter dread like a stone in the pit of her stomach. The hunched figure was breathing from the corner, waiting to make a move, waiting to pounce. Esme slowly backed out of the room, barely daring to make a sound. The figure remained crouched in the corner, but began making this appalling sound, like a fox being killed. It was laughing. Esme screamed and ran as fast as she could down the stairs, feeling, rather than seeing, the figure pursuing her. Esme tripped as she got to the second last step and fell with a loud thump at the bottom. She could see the figure on all fours right behind her making that terrible sound of excitement as it came upon its victim. Esme could feel the pain from the fall to her very soul, 
but she made herself stumble up and make the final dash back through the window to safety. She felt the creature grab her leg as she climbed out, but she kicked as hard as she could and freed herself. Esme managed to escape with her life. A later investigation revealed Renee's body hidden in the bathtub in the bathroom Esme had gone into. Renee's body was behind the rotting curtain, completely mutilated. Horrifyingly, Esme was only inches from Renee's body. Renee's phone was recovered with the footage containing the crouched figure hiding in the bath, confirming Esme's unbelievable story. And that's how they ended the story. So I believe that's just a fictional story. It's just a really terrifying story. And holy shit, that's horrifying and terrifying. And I really hope it's not true because somebody literally died and that's terrifying and so fucking sad. But thank you so much for allowing me to read your story. That was from the Reddit author Mummy to four so thank you so much your story was really good you were a really great author if that was fictional that is amazing like you are very good at <laughs> creating stories so now i think i'm just going to go over to instagram and i'm going to read you guys a couple of stories from there i think this will be a shorter video just because this is my first time coming back after literally almost two weeks and I'm not entirely sure how the sound quality is gonna be. So I really hope I don't have to refilm this, but we're gonna jump over to Instagram and I'm gonna read you guys a couple stories that have just been sitting in my inbox ready to go. I just wanted to start by saying a huge thank you. I love your content and was compelled to share a little story of my own. The tale is set somewhere along in my middle school years. I had three friends over that day. To my recollection, we were just hanging out in my bedroom, most likely talking, gossip and crushes as most young girls do when someone had the idea to play around with a Ouija board. This board was something I always remember being blatantly out in the open for some reason. It never actually belonged to anyone in my family. I think it was left behind by someone at our house at some point. I grabbed the board and without hesitation, we quickly all gathered around. We spread it out on my bed and anxiously huddled in. We started by asking pretty rudimentary questions like, hello, is there anyone with us? And is there anyone here from the other side? Things quickly started to take a mysterious turn when one of us asked, make a sound you don't hear every day. I remember hearing the shrill sound of a car's tires screeching outside. It may not have been too out of the ordinary, but I grew up in a very rural area, extremely country, no traffic lights, that kind of place. Wide-eyed and giggling, one of my friends then made another demand of the board, make three knocks at the door, but nothing happened. At that point, I was getting somewhat agitated and felt over it. I remember saying, okay, I think we should just put this away now. There was some protest and one of the girls chimed in, make something in the room move. Just then, it seemed like a small breeze swept through my bedroom. And I recall my beaded lamp swaying in a non-existent wind. We all collectively held our breath. And just then, I can still remember hearing the faint but clear sounds of knocks seemingly coming from inside the walls of my house. I felt more like an echo than an actual knock. It was slow and dragged out, but there were three consecutive thuds that rang out for us, clear as day. At that point, we had all had enough. We sprang out of the bed, shrieking and running downstairs to where my mother was folding laundry. She put the board away and we never touched it again. This story doesn't quite end here. My mother has always been in tune with energy and has always had weird feelings about things which eventually do come true. Well, she has always felt that this house was a little off since then and still does to this day. She says something was left opened, that we didn't close the board or say goodbye as we should have. My younger brother, he's 11 years younger than me, suffered from night terrors and sleepwalking all through his childhood. My mom has told me many stories of my brother walking through the house and saying very strange things. He would always seem to ask about a girl or say, where did the little girl go? I just saw a girl. My childhood and adolescent was riddled with nighttime episodes that he was thankfully seemed to have outgrown. It's probably also worth mentioning that I suffered from sleep paralysis a number of times, but it hasn't really happened again since I moved out of my parents' house. It's not something I like to think about or get into great detail over because it mostly just terrifies me. I've always felt my parents' house to be very occupied. It always feels full, not in a bad way. It very much feels like home and a happy place mostly, but just sometimes I get an eerie feeling that I can't quite explain. For instance, this past Thanksgiving, I went home. I was helping my mom clean up around the house and she was cooking. As I was cleaning the bathroom, when I suddenly felt that there was someone watching me or just with me, I kept looking over my shoulder and looking out of the corner of my eye, but it never really amounted to anything more than just a strange feeling. With all that being said, I think it might be time to take out the Ouija board down from the hallway closet and say goodbye once and for all. And that was all they said. Um, don't take the Ouija board out. Don't do that. That's 
not a good idea. I definitely am super against using those things. So just don't do that. That's a bad idea. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Your story was so fucking creepy. And oh my God, that's terrifying. I don't use Ouija boards for literally that reason. That is absolutely not something that I'll ever use because they're fucking terrifying. Oh my God, I hate them so much. <laughs> Hi, I recently discovered your channel and I love scary story videos. So I'd like to share one of my own. I grew up in a house that is about 100 years old. Throughout my whole life, weird and unexplainable things have happened. I have many stories, but the one I'm gonna share took place when I was about 10. The top floor of my house consists of my parents' bedroom, my bedroom, a walk-in storage closet, and a bathroom. The closet is between my room and the bathroom. So one night, when my mom was in the shower, I decided I was going to hide in that closet and jump out and scare her when she was finished in her shower. I knew she'd open the closet door to throw her dirty clothes in the hamper, like she always does, so I was trying to find the perfect place to hide. I decided I was going to crawl behind some suitcases that we had sitting in the back of the closet. I got down on the floor and moved a few inches out of the way so I could get into my hiding spot, but when I pushed on one, I heard this croaky voice that sounded like a creepy old woman saying, what's your name? Almost in a taunting kind of tone. I jumped back in absolute shock and said, I don't know what my name is, and ran out of the closet. I told my mom what had happened as soon as she got out of the shower, and neither of us could figure out where that voice had come from. There was nothing in that area besides a suitcase so nothing could have been talking. I was terrified of that closet for months after that. And to this day, I still don't know what was talking to me. And that's how they ended the story. Oh my God, thank you so much for sharing that. That is so fucking creepy. I have no idea. Um, it maybe like when you pushed the suitcase, like the way that it like sounded, like the plastic sounded, like made a noise and you thought it sounded like what's your name and it was probably just like the plastic moving, but it could have been a ghost. You never know. I don't know. But that's all the stories that I'm going to read tonight. I don't want this video to be too, too long, like I said. And I honestly just <laughs> want to get this posted as soon as possible for you guys. So thank you so much to the Udi for sponsoring today's video. This Udi is so freaking cute. I'm so cozy right now. I kind of want to wear an Udi every single time that I read these stories because this set like the perfect cozy vibe for reading terrifying stories. And it helped with my goosebumps because I always get goosebumps reading these stories and I already had a blanket on to protect me. So thank you so much to the Udi for sponsoring this video. I am so thankful and so happy that you guys reached out to me. Thank you so much to everybody that sent me in their stories. If you guys have any more stories you want me to read on my channel, please send me either an email or you can message me over Instagram. My socials are all listed in the description box down below. So if you guys want to share your scary stories, your let's not meet stories, paranormal stories, or just creepy stories in general, you know how to reach me. But thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys at the next one. Bye.